everyone, welcome back to Ruffington. I'm Tara and today we're making witch's cauldrons. First of all, I got this idea from another YouTube channel uh, who did this with their witch's cauldron for their Halloween display. I'll put the link to their video in the description. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is a plastic witch's cauldron. I got mine at Party City. It was like $20. I got like a big jumbo size, but you can do this really for any size. To make this look a little bit used and kind of crusty, I added oatmeal with Mod Podge and just kind of put it all over the cauldron. I put some on the lip of it and I kind of put them in little pointed trails coming out of the cauldron. So it looked kind of like maybe something, an old potion had boiled over the edges. But yeah, I did that first, put it on the side, let it, I let it dry completely for like a day. And then I did another coat of Mod Podge on top just to make sure it was sealed in there really good. And I haven't had any trouble with it since. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is paint over the oatmeal. I used a charcoal colored chalk paint to give it a little bit of a matte, a matted color, not too glossy. Um, so you just spray paint over that and you're good to go. The next part is painting it. I started with the handles. I painted them a coppery um, metallic color. And then to make the cauldron look kind of like coppery and rusty and old, um, you just kind of have brown and black and you do just kind of splot big splotches of each color um, in all, all over your cauldron. So I would do a big splotch of black all over and then right next to it I would do um, a, a big splotch of brown. And then in the end, I actually went over the browns with a kind of like a rose gold coppery one on top of the brown. So initially, I don't even know if I really needed the brown at first, so that might have been pointless, but it was a good start. So just do that. And honestly, with paint, if you mess up, you can always paint over it. So seriously, don't worry about it. Just slap some paint on there and it's going to look awesome. So after I did the copper and the black, I wanted to give my boiled over potion some more color. So I did a green mixed with some black and I kind of watered it down just a little bit. I did that all over and then I realized it was too dark once it dried. So I went back over it with a not so dark green and I love how it turned out. I kind of just followed where my oatmeal streaks were. I love it. At first I was a little scared because I loved how my antiqued cauldron ended up. Um, I didn't want to mess it up with the green but I really think it adds a lot of character and storytelling to your cauldron. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is figure out how you want to have the water in, like a water tray in your cauldron. I don't think you wanna fill the entire thing with water, that would be a lot. Unless you have a smaller cauldron, maybe that's what you can do. But for me, I wanted to make a shallow tray along the top of the cauldron to put my water in and my misters in. So what I did, I went to my local hardware store, Ace Hardware, and I tried to just find, I also just like searched all over my house for things I could use to build this and kind of just like jimmy rig it. So I found a planter tray like you put underneath your pots where your plants are. And I actually had another actual planter in my basement that I wasn't using. So I flipped it upside down and I put that in the bottom of my cauldron and then I put the tray on top. I also put the entire tray, you could just paint it black, like I could have just spray painted it, but I decided to go with the plastic bag approach. I put the tray in a plastic black garbage bag, a big one. And I duct taped with black duct tape all around the edge of the cauldron. I duct taped the bag to the cauldron directly. This has worked really well. It took me a couple tries. I had a couple holes initially, and so I had to take it all off and redo it. But in the end, it's worked really well. I've had it outside for quite a few days now with quite a few rainstorms that we've had too. And so it's it's held, it's worked really well. I will say try and make sure it's level because if it's if it tilts a little bit, then your water is just gonna look weird inside. It won't be level. Oh yeah, don't forget to, as you're taping it, make sure your bag is able to lay completely loose and flat on the bottom of your tray. If it ends up getting pulled too tight, I think this is where I messed up in my first run around, is that when you put water in it, it's gonna weigh it down and pull your tape off of the sides of your cauldron. So just make sure that as you're taping all the way around that it's, there's a lot of slack in the bag inside of your tray so that it doesn't pull when it's full of water. I got these misters on Amazon. They're awesome. A lot of people, it doesn't make like 
always the biggest mist, which I wish it would just like be super misty all the time. Kind of like what dry ice does, and everyone's like, you should just use dry ice. But the thing with dry ice is that you have to keep feeding it dry ice. I wanted to just turn it on, or turn it off, whenever I wanted it on. Uh, and so that's been the best part about having the misters, is that I can, it's just always there, I don't have to replenish it with anything. It's awesome, well, except water. You have to keep putting water in it. Before you tape it all the way around, you have to get your misters in your bucket and know how, where your cords are going. So what I did was I fed the cords down the side of my tray, down through the cauldron, and I drilled a hole through the bottom of the cauldron. My cords fit right through it. It worked great. And so then as I taped the black trash bag and my tray in all the way around, I taped over those cords, or I just taped them so that they didn't go over the edge. They went, you know, through, like up above the tray, below the lip, and down through the cauldron. It's worked really great, I, I like how it turned out. Just make sure you know where your electrical cords are going because you don't want, you know, your cords just hanging over the sides. That'll just mess up your whole, the mood of the whole cauldron. So you also need to think about where you want your cauldron to be. Is it, if it's sitting on the floor, that's great. You don't need to make a teepee or anything, but we, I wanted it to, it to be hanging, so we made a teepee out of sticks. It was really easy. Look up on YouTube how to uh, make a teepee, how to latch the tops together so you just pull them apart and they're all set. It was super great. And then I kind of just had to figure out how I was going to hang my cauldron. We ended up drilling holes in the sides, looping some rope through it and tying it off, and then just working with it to figure out when the cauldron would be level with you know our different ropes. So we ended up figuring that out, tying it off, and hanging it with a carabiner from some loop ropes from the top of our teepee. It's worked really great. It took a couple of tries, but we finally figured it out, and it's been sitting outside for days. Not a problem. You wanna make a little fire pit under your cauldron? I think it is, it's turned out so cool, and it's seriously the easiest thing ever. All you're gonna need is some spray foam insulation, some orange or red uh, lights. Um, we use just the incandescent twinkle lights and some black or gray spray paint and some red spray paint. I think that's all we used. So you just lay the lights down on the floor, spray the foam on top, it's super cool. You'll use probably your whole can, I use my whole can. And sorry to hear a baby, he's over here having a snack. We kind of realized if you do too many swirlies, like in one spot, it kind of looks like dog poop, so watch out for the swirlies. Even still, it turned out great. and then you spray it gray and black, gray or black on top. You want to not spray too much or else your light will, lights won't shine through. So turn your lights on before you spray, um, see how you like it, and then kind of spray it little splotches of black and red. We did mostly black with, you know, quite a few little splotches of red in between. at night I think it just looks like a real pit of fire it's amazing and then we put little rocks along the outside of the coals and so it looks just really cool I love how it turned out just know where your cords are gonna go and how you're gonna be getting power to your fire and to your cauldron I think that's it I also put a spotlight on top of the teepee to shine down on the cauldron which I think adds a lot I think it makes it look really cool also, sometimes I will add food dye into the water so that it kind of muddies the water so you can't see straight through to the misters. Guys, I love how this cauldron turned out. I was a little worried at certain points along the way, but in the end, it turned out so good. It is a huge uh, wow factor in my Halloween display this year. I hope you like this tutorial. I hope it helps you out. I'll list all the things that I used in the description. Uh, make sure you check out my Instagram, at Tara Brooke, to see my full Halloween display. It, is, it turned out so great. I'm gonna do another video of my whole display soon. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween. We'll see you next time. Bye. What do you think, Brady?
Huh? What do you think? You eating some cereal? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. <laughs>